In this video, I'm going to be showing you exactly my method on how I take out hard mode or glacier. So if you guys are having trouble trying to fight this boss on hard mode, make sure to stay tuned. Let's dive right in. As I'm going to show you right now, I am a novice to hard mode arc glacier. There's no gimmicks, there's no special talent with me here. A pure novice PVMer going after hard mode arc glacier. Now you will realize on a normal mode I do have over 4,000 kills there. About 99% of it is me AFKing it for when I was trying to get 99 on all of the combat skills itself when it first came out. With that being said, we're going to go over the inventory and the gear setup. As you see on the inventory, I do have an Elder Overload South. Now, you can use any Overload at this point up until a certain Enrage, which my highest Enrage is over 500, but that is it. So, you can even use just a Holy Overload. That's perfectly fine. I do have a Blessed Flask in here. That's because I created it. Got to bring it with me everywhere I go now. I do have an Enhanced Excalibur just in case something wants to happen. I also have an ancient elven ritual shard just in case I need more prayer throughout the fight. Now I also have Saradomin Bruise and a lot of blue blubber jellyfish just in case I need the health of course, you never know. Now I do have powder of protection. That could be very important for higher enrages, like I've noticed that I needed it around the 500 mark. Now before 500 enrage, you might not need it if you do your prayer flicking properly. But I bring it anywhere after the 200 mark 100% of the time. Now, within this video, you're going to see me using it at the very beginning because you can tell a big difference while using it and not using it. That 10% reduction is massive for our glacier. Now, I do have an adrenaline renewal pot just in case that I get hit with a cannon and I don't have adrenaline because a cannon comes up right after. I need to have the adrenaline for it because I'll show you in this method. Now we do have a weapon poison plus 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 because he is poisonable. It is super important to have some weapon poison here. It does a ton of damage and it does help with the kill times. Now I work with the blood reaver just because I have soul split on every once in a while in between attacks. And I also use the vampirism aura. And if you guys don't know, the blood reaver does attack every time you gain health. So extra procs for him attacking is a huge DPS buff now i do have quorum incense sticks you cannot forget those if you're going to do any kind of weapon poisoning whatsoever because it does amplify your weapon poisoning through any kind of boss now for the gear setup i am running with tier 95s but you can do this easily with tier 80s and after of course but your kill times are definitely going to be slower and you're going to have to fight the mechanics a little bit differently try to give out as much dps when his arm slammed down that kind of stuff so me i have the first necromancer set and i do have the cinder bane gloves which is super important for weapon poisoning now i'm also running with the tier 95 weapons as well the omni guard and the soulbound lantern because i have them again you can use the tier 80s and above but i do recommend doing anything between the tier 90s to the tier 95s of course more dps the better when it comes to this boss Zuck Cape, almost recommended for any kind of bossing within this game. Now, I do have an Essence of Finality. You can use a Blood Amulet, but if you have the Essence of Finality, use it. It helps out. I am running with the Reaver Ring here, just because I'm not using equ Equilibrium Aura. So, the Reaver Ring is the best slot. Now, I am running with a Death Warden Nexus because I'm not that great at PVM, and so I'm not able to get it upgraded quite yet. Now, for my Godbook, I am running with the Scripture of When. I'm not too sure. I'm sure you can easily use everything else, the Fool and the Jazz Book, of course, but I run with the Scripture of When just because it does a ton of extra damage when it comes to the Arc Glacier. Now, for the Revo Bar, it's pretty simple. As you can tell, we have Conjure Undead Army, Ghost, Skeleton, soul sap touch of death sacrifice and divert the main reason why sacrifice and divert are on there is so it can help us gain more adrenaline through the fight divert also once you hit it it gives you adrenaline and once you get hit by an attack from arc glacier it also gives you more adrenaline now a little fact about that if you use divert for his cannon it does not give you adrenaline and just cancels it out also we have keybind finger of death Volley of Souls, Bloat, Threads of Fate, Death Skulls, and our special attack. 
Now, for any of those, you want to be careful with your adrenaline because Arc Glacier does the cannon blast, which if you aren't ready and you don't have adrenaline to cast devotion later in the fight, it could screw your whole fight up itself. So you want to be careful when you throw your death skulls out. You want to be careful when you use your special attack. You want to be careful when you use them bloat. And finger of death, you want to be careful if you don't have any necrosis stacks stacked up. Anyways, we're going to move down to the bottom bar you see here we have all of our deflects on there our deflect magic range melee and we also have soul split even at lower enrages you want to learn how to prayer flick just for the simple fact if you don't learn how to prayer flick on the lower enrages once you reach up to 250 300 400 500 enrage he hits like a truck and especially if you do not have powder of protection on and you do not prayer flick properly he can take you half health in one single swipe at least in those enrages and i believe he can one shot you once you go into the thousands percentage now for the rest of the key binds, we do have freedom devotion reflect and debilitate so when it comes to the cannons those are the four abilities that you're gonna use through every single one of his abilities i will explain that when the cannons do come up now, before you get into the fight, you're going to click on hard mode. You're going to get everything ready. You're going to turn on your god book. You're going to turn on your aura. You're going to hit your overload. You're going to make sure your weapon poison plus 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 is going. You have your blood reaver out. You have your quorum sticks. Everything is all set and done. You hit conjure undead army before you go in. Click on it. Find your enrage, which if you're starting brand new, it's going to be 0% enrage, of course. And go right into the fight. Now, he does do random mechanics. It's not the same mechanics every single time. So he is super, super unpredictable. But that is why I am showing you from a novice aspect because you never know what's going to come at you. Now for the mechanics, the first one I'm going to talk about is Exposed Core. As you see on screen, he brings the creeping ice from both sides, slams his arms to the bridge. And then what you're going to want to do is you're going to find one arm and you're going to attack it. Now, over time, the magic damage does increase. So you want to try to destroy his arm as fast as possible. Now, right after that, as you saw, he is immune to any damage. So be careful of what kind of abilities you're going to be using attacking Orc Glacier at this point. Because once you hit him right after, it is he doesn't take any damage. Now, the next ability we're going to talk about is Frost Cannon. Here you can see the Creeping Ice coming from both sides again, but this time he's going to be using Frost Cannon. This mechanic is most likely the most deadliest mechanic that Arc Glacier has, just for the simple fact that if you don't do it properly, it will one-shot you every single time. Now, the Frost Cannon can come from all sides, from the right, left, and middle. As you see here, you have the Creeping Ice coming down into the middle, which can throw some people off, but how you can tell is... He will not slam his arms down. He will do a giant delay slash pause and he will let you know that it is going to be the frost cannon. Now, in this clip, you will see that the creeping ice does come from the right side, indicated by a little ice shard come flying across the bridge and a little ice shard coming from the left. Now, this is 100% frost cannon. No other mechanic from Arc Glacier comes from the right hand side so that's how you can indicate that this is 100% frost cannon so you make sure you get ready in this one you will see from the left hand side the creeping ice is coming in indicated with the little ice shard coming across but you want to be careful you want to pay attention where the ice shard stops because if it stops at a certain spot you can kind of dictate what comes up and you'll know that it is a frost cannon now that also indicates what the other mechanic could be which is called pillars of ice but once you recognize that it is going to be a frost cannon mechanic, you're going to make sure that you have plenty of adrenaline. If you have to use the adrenaline pot, that's why we have it. But first things first, you want to make sure you have deflect magic on. As soon as you have deflect magic on, and as soon as he starts doing the frost cannon, you're going to hit your freedom, and you're going to hit your devotion. That will negate all of the damage from him, and it doesn't stun you as well. But you're probably saying, Uprising, what if he does it a second time? in a row that is when your reflect and debilitate do come in because everything's still going to be on cooldown and you're going to need to be able to negate as much damage as possible now reflect negates 50 percent and it reflects back to him and then debilitate also reduces damage from the frost cannon itself so you still want to make sure your deflect magic is up and then you're just going to hit your reflect and your debilitate and basically hope for the best that you just you don't die from a frost cannon now for the pillar of ice mechanic what you're going to want to do is pay attention to the creeping ice from the left 
It's going to look identical to the frost cannon that comes from the left, but it goes a little bit further to the right on the bridge. All I do is I run up to the top right hand side of the bridge, run to the bottom right, immediately start running to the left. You're going to see a pillar pop up in the middle right here. I dive up to the top, run to the far left, run to the bottom because creeping ice usually comes there. And you might take a hit or two, which could suck in higher in rages, but lower in rages, you'll be fine and get back into it. Now we have the most annoying mechanic of all of RuneScape, and that is called Glacite Minions. It's super annoying because you could be on a straight run against Arc Glacier. He throws up a shield and he shoots out some Glacite Minions. And you have to stop doing so much DPS to Arc Glacier to turn your attention to these Glacite Minions. Now how to deal with these guys is simple. You just hit Threads of Fate. You can use Soul Sap and then Volley of Souls right after so you have your full stack of souls. Or you could just, you know, Threads of Fate, hit them with the Finger of Death, maybe another Finger of Death, and it will end them pretty quickly. Once you are done ending them, you're going to pick up the Glacite Cores, which do a fixed damage amount to the Arc Glacier as well. The faster you get through the Glacite minions, the faster you can continue putting so much DPS on Arc Glacier. Now, for his final mechanic, you're going to see Creeping Ice coming from both sides, but it doesn't come all the way in like the exposed core. Here is where your prayer flicking comes handy. You can recognize each attack very distinctly. So, you'll see his normal auto attack will be magic. You'll see that you'll get the green speckles that will be range. And then when he slams his arm onto the bridge and does a giant swipe, it is melee. So, what you're going to do is you're going to prayer flick accordingly. And then in between, you do have plenty of time that you can swap over to Soul Split if you really desire and if or you need the health. So when you get in higher in rages with this mechanic, this can one-shot you if you misclick a prayer swap at all. So make sure you pay attention even while learning at a lower in rage. All right, so I'm going to run through a kill with you guys real quick. At the very beginning, I invoke death. I hit my ghost and I hit my skeleton right at the very beginning so they all are ready to go. Now I see creeping ice coming from the left hand side and I watch the little ice spike shoot all the way across the bridge. So now I know that it's going to be pillars of ice. With me knowing that, I just run to the top right hand corner, wait for one of the pillars to start coming to me about two spaces away. I start booking it down to the bottom. Once I hit the bottom, run all the way to the left. The third pillar will come up in the middle. You just dive right up to the top, continue to the left. You'll see creeping ice coming back out right there. Run to the bottom, run to the right. You'll see me getting hit with the pillar here for 1700, even with prayer up. Now I notice he took a pause here with the creeping ice coming from both sides, which shows me that it's going to be frost cannon. So now I have my deflect magic up and I hit devotion and freedom so you don't get stunned and it gets all of the magic attack from the frost cannon. Here you will see that he will summon the glacites. So you don't want to always do too much damage right after a mechanic because you never know when these things are coming up. Threads of Fate, Volley of Soul, take care of them, get them out of the way, collect the Glacite cores, and just get back to work with the Arc Glacier. Now, after the Glacite minions are taken care of, it is my favorite time to dump as much DPS as I possibly can to the Arc Glacier, because you have so much time in between the minions and the next mechanic that's going to come up. So I usually throw out everything I possibly have at this time. Now you notice that you have the creeping ice coming from both sides. Now you still don't know if it's going to be frost cannon or if it's going to be the exposed core. Now there was no pause so exposed core comes out. This is where I usually throw invoke death on right beforehand. I use finger of death, maybe another finger of death or volley of souls if you have that ready as well. Once that's taken care of, I don't unleash any abilities whatsoever because I know he is immune after the arm has been broken. Now you will notice in between each mechanic you have plenty of time to do a bunch of different kind of abilities if you really wanted to but you have to be careful what kind. Now you notice that the creeping ice came from both sides and it wasn't deep so now you know he's just doing a flurry. So just do your prayer for like and make sure you're doing it properly especially at higher in rages and then once you hit 30k health on Arc Glacier you now know that he is going to be killed and you move on check your loot out all right that is my method on how i take out arc glacier i'm not saying it's the best method out there it's just how i've been doing it and currently i'm at 518 percent in rage with arc glacier and i feel kind of comfortable with it there so if you guys have found anything useful within this tiny little novice guide that i have given you guys Drop a like and maybe even consider subscribing for future content from a novice PVMer 
until next time guys stay safe see you